construction, the way it's constructed, and the kind of stones that they use. These stones are known as sandstones. These are sandstones. Mine site to the western part of the country are all limestone mine sites. Those are much faster to erode. Very easy to erode, especially when exposed to too much sun and rain. Very fast. But these are sandstones. These are what we call river rocks. You see, Lubantun is actually a site that is being surrounded by a river, which is about a mile from here, a stream where we just passed through. So these miles are people that believe carrying the stones from the creek, from the river, bringing it over and constructing it. The famous part about this site is that these sandstones are fitted together with no mortar. They're fitted together. They cut them as right angle triangles, 90 degrees, and they fit them together with no mortar. So when it was actually occupied, all of this, they're the laughing falcon. All of this was actually neatly packed. Neatly packed. You can see pieces of it out there. Neatly packed. Mm -hmm. You see, when we were under the British colony, when we were under the British expedition, these people come here and they can do whatever they want. Just right in this structure here, when we go further, I'll show you a structure that was blown up by Norman Hammond in 1970. Norman Hammond is actually a medical officer. He's not an archaeologist. But you see, they were in search of gold and treasures from the Mayas because they believed that these Mayas had gold. But looking at it nowadays, these Mayas didn't have gold. There is no presence of gold around in any of the Mayan sites in Belize. The only precious stones that the, these Mayas had were the jade. Flints, obsidian blades. They use flints and the obsidian blades to cut these sandstones, to shape these sandstones. Flints, obsidian blades, and jades are not found in Belize. Those are found in the highlands of Guatemala. Flints and obsidian blades are actually rocks from volcanic reactions. So we believe that these Mayas, the Mayas that used to live around here, or Mayas that used to occupy the site, because another site is just eight miles from here, namely Ponit, which means the big hut. We believe that these Mayas do a lot of trading. They do a lot of trading with the nearby site, Guatemala, and they usually travel through rivers, creeks, and streams through dugout canoes. That's the only way that these people used to travel only way that these people used to travel so that's what we believe shells are being found here seashells are being found in this site a lot of figurings a lot of figurings are actually what we call molds of either rulers molds of people that are very high within the whole site itself because we believe that different mayan sites run differently it's not like different all mayan sites are the same this site here is actually a site in its own right. The other site, which is eight miles from here, that site is famous for its stelas. Stelas are huge carved stones. Out here, we don't have stelas. Out here is just fittings, structures, and buildings. But you see what happened out here? We believe that all these structures here, we believe it lasted around 650 AD around 890 AD that's like the peak of the civilization that's what we believe but again the way these Mayas constructed it if you notice it's like on the top of a mountain but eventually these Mayas get up high that's because they start building all the way from down because we believe that every 52 years these Mayas abandoned a structure and what they do is they fill it up with soil and they build on top of it. So that's why when you look at these structures here, it's wide to the base and it gets narrower as it goes up. Because the belief that these Mayan people have is that the, far, the, the higher they build, the closer they get to their gods. Because these people believe in rain god, corn god, medicine god, moon god. I mean, whatever gods you can think about, they have them. 
these people have beliefs it's not like nowadays nowadays we don't believe you you pretend you believe in something but the next day you forget it it's not like these people these people have strong beliefs they believe in their gods if they want rain they will sacrifice to their rain god if they want sun they sacrifice to the sun god and they get what they want that's the belief of these people here nowadays especially within the, these Mayan communities traditions the cultures are being lost especially the young generation growing up right now they don't look at it they don't take it to heart that it's our generation it's our culture they don't do it anymore the only people that do it right now especially in this village here are the older people they still believe in that they still come here now and again sometimes you come here you meet them kneeling down this is a ball court this is a ball court again no excavation has been done to it but usually in a ball court marker bar court you have a ball court marker so most of the time you would come here and you meet these people burning their incenses kneeling down praying down sometimes you don't see them but you meet fresh ashes they still believe in that but the young generation right now it's like they don't care anymore they don't care anymore when we go back later you guys will meet my father my grandfather is still a bush doctor he still believes in medicinal plants he still believes in traditional healing he still do that he's still living nowadays all right any questions